Welcome to a supercut for the Things You Missed series. Today, we'll be going through all parts of the Shunning Grounds. If this is your first supercut, let me quickly address why I'm doing this so you don't need to worry that I'm just regurgitating old content for the views. That is not at all what this channel is about. I just want to make the guides as clear and fun as possible for you. So I realized, why am I making you watch three or four videos for certain areas when I could bundle them all into one big video for your convenience and pleasure? Hence, the supercut. So if at any point throughout this video I talk about in the next part, for example, I've just left that in because without it, the video wouldn't sync up and you may have missed some vital footage. Now that you know that, please sit back, relax and enjoy. We're going to start exploring the subterranean shunning grounds together. To find the entrance to this dungeon, make sure you've watched my Things You Missed in Laindale the Royal Capital, because I do show you how to get to the underground roadside site of Grace there. So once you have lit that site of Grace, I'll meet you there. Now to start off this video, I'm just going to show some footage of me fighting these putrid ogres, as they are incredibly powerful and plentiful within this area. So make sure you get familiar with them, and make sure that you're strong enough and comfortable with defeating them. If not, you can check out a few of my other videos if there are other areas of the game you haven't progressed yet, and you can come back here later when you're a bit more powerful, because you are gonna need a strong character to get through this area. Also, to make sure you don't miss out on any other juicy Elden Ring content, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, and also please consider giving this video a like if you enjoy the content. Now, we'll get into the first real tip for this video. I've just switched up my build to make sure I'm as powerful as possible for this area, so I'll skip this first bit of footage as I'm clearing out the few ogres here. And then as you're running down the only hallway currently available to you, on the right hand side you'll see a ladder, and you can also grab part of the blood soaked armor set. We'll ignore that ladder for now, and right at the end of the room you'll see a hole in the floor. You can grab that golden rune 11 before we go down, and then jump in the hole and we'll start exploring. There's a bunch of rats to clear out including one that's going to jump out and ambush you from a crate. Then you'll see a tunnel on your right hand side. Ignore that for now and go straight forwards. There's now a good five minutes of me very cautiously killing lots of giant Miranda blooms. So I'll skip through that for you and I'll meet you at the end of the hallway. Here you're going to see a ladder that you can progress up. You can loot a rune arc right at the top. And then be a lot more careful than I was, because as you go to loot this item, you'll be ambushed by a load of finger creepers. I somehow managed to survive the encounter. I yeet myself off the ledge and survive the fall, then come back and very cautiously deal with all the finger creepers. Once they're dead, as long as you've been progressing the Dung Eater's questline, he will have given you the sewer jail key, and you can use that here to go and speak to him. There's nothing to loot in this room, but now that we've freed him, I'll show you where to do the next part of his questline, and we'll cover his questline in in full in a later video. But now that we've freed him, I'm going to go back to Roundtable Hold and speak to him there. Once you get back to Roundtable Hold, if you go to where he was, there will just be a note. And that will read, I'll defile you next. Come to the outer moat. So now you want to teleport yourself just to the north of the royal capital. I've marked on the map the moat that he's referring to. And as we're heading down, we'll be invaded by the Dung Eater. When you defeat him, you'll be rewarded with the Sword of Milos, which is an awesome looking great sword with pretty reasonable stat requirements and also a relatively high scaling index considering it's a great sword and also it has blood loss build up with a very cool looking unique skill that changes up the two-handed heavy attack so all in all not a bad reward for that part of the dung eaters quest now you can go back to round table hold and speak to him again and you will have unlocked the next part of his quest line this i will be covering entirely in his own quest line video but essentially what you need to do now is find five of the six available seedbed curses throughout the world and feed them to him back at his location in the sewer jail. As I say, we'll expand on that in his questline video. I'll leave it there for now and we'll get back to the subterranean shutting grounds. This is where this area is going to start to get really, really confusing. We're going to jump back down the hole in the ground and clear out the few rats before entering into the tunnel. And from this point, there is so many winding tunnels and pipes that lead you to various dead ends. It doesn't really matter what order you complete them in, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't get lost at least once or twice. So for the most part, I will take you through as logically as I can. But what I will also do for you is rather than taking you through every single step of my journey, 
journey, I will call out all of the important missable items so you can just create a checklist and make sure that you haven't missed anything. And together, we will find everything eventually. So straight away, as I've just done, make sure you avoid the holes in the floor as you're either avoiding or taking out all of these slugs. After you've jumped over the second hole, you'll get 10 rainbow stone arrows. And then the first path we're going to take is we're going to go left at this grate and down the tunnel. I'm then going to take out a group of slugs because I just can't help myself. When I see enemies in this game, they need to die. I'm going to fail miserably trying to get this one on the roof and keep heading down. On your right hand side, you'll see a lesser revenant you can take out. And then there'll be another lesser revenant in front of you as you go out into this room here. There's a few more lesser revenants scattered around. Take them out quickly because when you progress a certain way into the room, a royal revenant will spawn. Good luck with him. If you're good with your dodges, you can just run around the room grabbing all the items and get the fuck out if you want. I opted to take him out so I could loot cautiously and there's some decent loot in here including a ghost glove wart 6 and a smithing stone 7. So now we'll head back into the pipes and go straight forward through the grate this time. Be very careful for all the slugs that will jump out and try and ambush you. You can loot some fireproof dried liver behind where they were and then you'll come to another room where you'll have to fight two putrid ogres in quick succession. Be very careful with these two. Once they're both dead, you can get a somber smithing stone eight and head up the ladder. Be super careful here. Now you can unlock your first shortcut back to the initial site of grace. And then once we've taken out this putrid ogre who was over in the corner of the room by the statue, you can then come over and help yourself to a smithing stone seven and also open up these doors, which we'll be going through much later in the video. For now, I'm gonna go back to the site of Grace and Rest, and then we'll continue on with the guide. Now that we're back in the pipes, come back to the grate where we were ambushed by a few slugs just here. You don't need to go as far as the slugs, it's just so you have a point of reference. I'm gonna come back to this grate and turn left. We're gonna jump over this hole, and then just a bit further down around the corner, you'll see a load more slugs with another hole. I'm gonna accidentally fumble and fall down here, which takes me to where we actually need to go, which is amazing. One end is a dead end, so keep heading the other way. This is a linear tunnel, and in no time at all, you'll come out to an enclosed area with some lesser revenants. Once you've taken them out, you can grab a stone sword key, open up this door, and get back into the tunnel we were just in. Now I'm going to jump over the hole that we just fell in, take out all these slugs, and I'll be back at the start where all the rats are. Just as another point of reference for you to help orient yourself if this is already getting very confusing, because I know it is for me. And then just to test it to make sure I'm not missing out on anything, I jump into the second hole as well that we jumped over before, but that just brings you back to the room with the Royal Revenant. So don't worry, you're not missing anything there. You don't need to make that jump. We're done with these pipes for now, so let's teleport back to the same site of Grace again, and I'll talk you through the next bit. Now that we're back at the site of Grace, it's time to take the ladder that we've been passing a few times. That's on the right hand side before you get to the hole in the floor. You'll drop down onto a series of very precariously thin pipes with lots of imps on them. So be super careful as you're clearing out and looting this area. There's no incredibly awesome items to share with you, so I'll skim over them very briefly, but you can grab some freezing grease, serpent arrows, and also from the central platform here, once you've taken out this imp, some fire grease. Make sure you also head down this pipe to grab a somber smithing stone 6. And then once you finish clearing out the rest of the imps, we're going to take the southwest exit. And once we've grabbed this smithing stone 7, be super careful as you come into this next room. Because you can open yet another shortcut back to the main site of Grace. But there will be an ogre ready to ambush you. And before I manage to defeat him and loot the item, I aggro another one, panic, and die. So let's try that again, shall we? This time we're gonna absolutely wreck his face with Comet Azure, and then we can loot the Shadow Bait spell. And now, just as you come back into the room with all the pipes and imps, you can drop down onto a pipe below you, right outside the door that we just came through. Once you're down here, drop down again, and you'll face two giant crayfish. We all already know exactly how horrific these enemies are due to the fact that they scored so highly in the community voted top 10 most hated enemies in the game. So super good luck with these guys. And once you've taken them out, you are free to go around and loot some incredibly awesome items, including a somber smithing stone seven from this scarab here, two smithing stone seven just ahead of them, and Moog's shackle at the end of the room here. Which, just like with Margit's shackle, not only will it stun Moog during his boss fight, you can also use it in dungeons and catacombs to trigger things like the fire-breathing statues. Now, at the other end of the room, you'll get another somber smithing stone seven, and two more smithing stone seven. And we're done here. Now, go back to where you looted Moog's shackle, and you'll see a hole in the wall on your right. Head through here, 
And before you use the lift, go down these stairs and you can activate the Lanedale Catacomb site of Grace. This is an absolutely enormous dungeon. So we will cover this as part of the second and final part of the things you missed in the subterranean shedding grounds. Make sure you stay tuned for that. It will be out in a day or two and we'll be covering a super secret boss and wrapping up Hyeta's quest line and becoming the Lord of the Frenzied Flame after meeting the Three Fingers. Some very exciting stuff coming up. We're going to be wrapping up the shedding grounds and it is going to be a big one. We're going to start off with one of the biggest catacombs in the game along with an incredibly spicy optional boss and unlocking a whole entire ending to the game. So if you like the sound of this please make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of the amazing content I've got coming up for you and if you enjoy the video please leave a like and leave a comment because it helps the channel grow so much and thank you. Now we'll start out here at the Lanedale Catacomb site of Grace which we unlocked at the end of part one and we'll start going through Lanedale Catacombs. This is an absolute monster of a dungeon, as I say, and it contains three floors, all of which look identical. So you want to be super vigilant as you're progressing as to not get too lost. Straight away in this first room, after you've come up the lift, will be a load of spectral soldiers. They will respawn perpetually until you break open this illusionary wall just here. Then you can take out this soldier and go through another one immediately afterwards, where you'll find a ghost caller snail that you need to kill, which will despawn all of the ghosts and stop any more from spawning. You can also grab the Halig Drake Talisman plus one whilst you're here and then we'll go up the stairs into the next area. Here you can pull this lever, which will open up the roof above you. This has unlocked a shortcut back to the very first site of Grace for the area. So we won't go this way, we'll head back down for now. And now back at the site of Grace, we wanna run down the stairs, activate the summoning pool, and then come forwards into the main dungeon. Feel free to beeline it past all of these zombies that spawn in the first area. Then directly in front of you, just as you get to the top of the stairs, you can take out these zombies and get yourself a Ghost Glove Wart 6. Be careful for a few explodey zombies in the next room. And then, as always with the fire breathing statues, make sure you time your runs carefully so you can get past it. And then you want to jump on top of it and send it back up again to head up into the room here with a putrid ogre. Once you've taken him out, you can get to the end of the room and get yourself a crucible scale talisman. This will reduce all damage that you take from critical hits. Now head out and back down. As we go back down the way we came, we can turn left here and come up the stairs. Be careful as you get to the top of the stairs because another ogre will be waiting around the corner. Once you've taken him out, you can progress forward where he just was, grabbing a Grave Glove Wart 9. There's nothing on this balcony, but you can now drop down here, grabbing a Grave Glove Wart 8 from the center of the room. And we're now on the second floor, which is where things start to get a little bit confusing. As you're progressing through, you'll see a door that looks like the boss room. And we did pull a lever earlier, so I was like, oh hell yes, I've unlocked the boss room. When actually, it's just a replica of the boss room on a different floor of the dungeon. Be careful because you will be ambushed by an ogre here on your right. And once you've taken them both out, you can grab yourself a Ghost Glove War 8 and a Golden Rune 11. Unfortunately, there's no more loot here. This room is a massive letdown. So now we'll run back the way we came, and once you get into the partially flooded room, we'll go up the stairs and continue progressing along floor number two. You can ignore the statue at the end of the hall and just continue going up the stairs. The two zombies will come to life and you can get a grave glove or eight once you've dealt with them. And then this is where things get even more confusing, because as you round the corner, you'll see the corpse of an ogre, which seemingly is the one you took out in the previous floor. But as we know, we're in a completely different part of the dungeon. So it gets really trippy now, because you're seeing corpses of the enemies you've beaten, despite the fact you're in a different area. So we'll deal with this ogre, along with this other zombie I somehow managed to miss. I don't know where he came from. Once they're dead, we'll progress through and hop down into the flooded room once more. But now we are on the third and final layer of the catacombs. In this room, few more zombies and a Grave Glove War 8. There's another one that you can grab in the next room. And then be very careful as you're running forwards here to the Grave Glove Wart 9 because another ogre will ambush you. And if your run's going anything like mine, you're going to be fairly low on healing and FP by this point. Once he's dead, we can run to the end of this corridor and hop out the window here. Once you've jumped out of the window, do a 180 and head behind you. Now we're going to jump on top of the fire breathing statue. But as we're on a different floor of the dungeon, it will take us to a different room. And in this version of the room, there's another corridor leading off to the right. 
Head down here and we'll finally be in a new area. Come all the way down this ladder once you've taken out the fanged imps. And here, don't do what I did and accidentally fall off to the room below. Along the top of this platform here is an item and also the lever that we need to open the door to the boss room. So I'm going to skip the next few minutes of footage and meet you back here without falling off this time. Now that we're back here, I'll come round to the right this time, grabbing the sacramental buds and now pull the lever for the boss room. Now you can jump down, head along the northwest path here, and finally you will be back at the start of the dungeon. So go and rest to replenish your items if you need to, and prepare for the boss. And the boss is Esgar, Priest of Blood, who is pretty easy, honestly. Very anticlimactic for such a hard and long dungeon. Just make sure you take out the dogs first so that it's a one-on-one -on -one fight and he should go down with no problems. He says as he just very nearly dies to blood loss. Try and be slightly less careless than me, and in theory, you should be fine. And finally, after some incredibly touch and go moments, because the boss ended up being a little bit harder than I first anticipated, once we do finally take him down, you're rewarded with the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which is a very unique talisman I don't think I will ever use, which increases your attack power when in the vicinity of blood loss. We're done now, so I'll meet you back at the very first site of grace for this area, which is the underground roadside, and I'll see you there. Now that we're back here, head left out of the room, taking the northeast hallway, and right at the very end, we're finally gonna go into that door that we opened right at the end on the right-hand side in the last part of the video. Soon as you get here, very carefully walk off the ledge right here you'll drop down onto some broken stairs and straight away you can take out this scarab to get a somber smithing stone six now head down the bottom of the stairs for a string and a warming stone obviously two incredibly important items <laughs> now round the corner there's a bunch of zombies and a few flowers that you can deal with if you wish or just run past them and now as we come down these stairs we're going to do a 180 and go through the metal grate here picking up the preserving boluses as we go we will be exploring the other way and going straight forward in a later part but we'll do this side area first to make sure that we're not missing anything straight after looting that item you'll have turned right and headed up the first pipe deal with the basilisk in front of you be careful as another one will ambush you on the right once you've dealt with them you'll see right by this dude that i just killed there's a door that we currently can't open so we'll head the only way that we can and turn right at the end of the hallway then up this tube you'll come out to a flooded room with a putrid ogre he is particularly more powerful than the rest so be super careful as you're taking him out and you'll be rewarded with the omen bairn and the omen bairn is very similar to the wraith calling bell in that it uses fp to unleash wraiths to chase down foes i've never used it myself but i believe it's just a more powerful version of the wraith calling bell now we'll head up this big ladder at the top you'll see just behind us is another ladder we will eventually come to that and kick it down to unlock a shortcut but for now run straight out here and one thing i forget to do before fighting all the imps and traversing the pipes as soon as you walk out the door directly in front of you to the northwest open that that is a shortcut back to the roadside site of grace that we've been using so make sure you open that door and unlock that shortcut before you progress the way that i am now going once you've done that follow me along these pipes taking out all the imps there's a couple of items but nothing of note so i'll skim through it all then as you get right to the southeast edge here on top of this pipe you can jump off and fall below from here you can hop onto the wooden walkway here and just at the end you'll get a golden rune 10 before turning right and heading through onto the platform i mentioned a minute ago Kick down the ladder to unlock this shortcut. Once you've kicked down the ladder, you'll see just below you, there's a pipe with a big opening in it. Jump into this pipe. We will eventually go both ways, but for now, we're gonna go southeast and start chasing this rat down. He takes a sharp left at this corner and all the way down this pipe. Then you wanna drop down the hole in front of you. Be careful because an enemy will try and grab you from behind. You can grab this smithing stone and open up the gate to unlock a shortcut that we discovered earlier. Now, right at the end of this pipe is a big ladder down into a room full of living jars. Be careful of the giant one, he isn't immediately targetable, but he will attack you. Once you've looted everything here, including the ritual pot, take the lift all the way down, and you can unlock the Forsaken Depths Site of Grace. Prepare yourself, for we're about to go into a boss fight. At the end of the next few flights of stairs, once you've grabbed this smithing stone six, 
you'll come into the boss room of Moog the Omen. If you recall, we grabbed Moog's shackle in the previous video. Now you can use this to temporarily stun him and get some very powerful attacks off whilst he tries to recover. And doing that allows me to defeat him pretty damn quickly and grants us the reward of the Blood Flame Talons, along with a hundred thousand runes. At the end of the room is a chest with the Erd Tree's favor plus one. And we're now going to be told off by Melania because she believes that we're attempting to follow the path of the Frenzied Flame and asks us to stop. And unfortunately for her, she's right. So rest up and I'll meet you back here for the next part of the video. We're just going to wrap up one more side path before we continue along with the main part of this area. So back in the partially flooded room with the super tough Putrid Ogre, you want to head up the ladder that we kicked down, jump back into the pipe, but this time head southwest and through the grate. This whole side area doesn't have anything tremendously important in, and it's super easy to explore. Just hug either the left wall or the right wall, and eventually you will discover all of the alcoves. In here, I'll leave you a quick checklist of all the items to make sure you don't miss anything during your exploration. There will be one smithing stone eight, one eye of yellow, and four smithing stone seven, along with a golden rune and a warming stone. But they're nowhere near as important. That truly is all you need for this part of the subterranean shedding grounds, so I'll leave it there and once you've finished exploring, I'll meet you back for the next part. We're now finally going to finish exploring one more side path and then come on to the main real juicy part of the video. So I meet you now back at the underground roadside site of Grace and we're heading once more towards the northeast end of this area through the double doors that we opened up on the right. Before you drop down this time, just head to the end of these stairs and you can get a Grace Mimic, but that's all there is here. So now go back to the other end and very carefully drop down once again. I'll run past all the zombies and the flowers and this time, instead of doing a 180 and running underneath the stairs we're going to carry on forwards you can get some fire grease off the corpse at the end of the ledge here then at the bottom of the stairs is a fuckload of enemies like so many flowers and basilisks so i'm just gonna run past them all you can grab a load of poison stones just here if you want and then the main reason we're here is just at the edge of the ledge here you can get the nomad ashes that's all there is for this section, so I'm going to chill here until I'm out of combat, and I'll meet you back for the most important part of this video. You meet me now just heading into the cathedral where we defeated Moog the Omen, and directly behind the chest that we opened, smash the altar here, and it will lower, revealing one of the most cool and terrifying areas in the game. Run along this plank, and make sure you're utilising the lock-on button a lot, because most of these are corpses, but some of them aren't. There's a few items in this first area, including five Grace Mimics and a Yellow Ember, along with one or two enemies that you want to be very careful that you take out so they can't ambush you. Once you're done there, just keep progressing forwards until you walk out onto the second plank. From here, you want to jump down to the northwest and you can get the Frenzied's Cookbook too. Now progress to the other end of the plank, dealing with the enemies here and grabbing a couple of bits of loot. From here, you're going to see me die. Actually, less than I thought I would, but still maybe three or four times, because you have got the toughest platforming section in the game coming up now. I decided to get completely naked, because I don't know if this is true, but I've heard it helps you jump a bit further, and probably the placebo effect, but I just feel like it helps you control your character a bit better. I know that may sound crazy to some, but hopefully a few people agree with me. So whilst I'm talking you through this, I will ask the person editing if they can very kindly try and leave in my one successful attempt so you can see exactly how I got down so that it hopefully helps you out during your attempt. About halfway down, as we drop onto this coffin here, we can loot the inescapable frenzy spell along with a yellow ember just here and then right at the end of this walkway after we take out this enemy, the fingerprint stone shield which is strongly considered as the best shield in the game. I've never delved into shields myself, so I don't know the true power of this shield, but it does have an innate madness buildup of 70, which is, I think, probably the highest of any weapon in the game. So that is crazy. Also, you can imbue it with the Holy Ground Ash of War, which we took a which we took a very brief look into in a previous video. I believe it was the deep root depths and the ash of war holy ground looks incredible that paired with this shield oh you know what? i really want to try that out now maybe i'll do that <laughs> 
so yeah, now that you've got this, and whilst I've been jabbering on, you'll see I've also been trying to get to this other item that's hidden in this little cloth tent hut structure here. How the hell do you get here? Well, I've since done some research because I was way too curious, and there's two ways I can see. One way is to get one of the enemies here to use a frenzied flame spell on it and it will break. Or apparently some people have had a success just quitting out of the game and loading back in. And when they load back in, it will just be broken. But don't worry if you miss it, even though it does look like it's an epic item, it's just a note. And I don't believe it's a note of any importance. So don't worry if you can't get that like I couldn't. We're not missing out on anything. Now we'll continue on down using lovely stairs rather than trying to jump from coffin to coffin. And right at the bottom here, we're finally close enough to the floor that we can just jump down and successfully land on solid ground. Oh, it's such a relief. It's such a good feeling. Like the sight of Grace, and if you've been progressing Hayata's quest line, she will be here and she will advise you that you can go through and speak to the three fingers, but you must divest yourself of your possessions, i.e. you gotta be naked. Get naked, boys. I'm not going to let this cutscene play out, and I'm not going to show you most of the dialogue with Hayata either, because I'll be covering all of this in depth during her questline, which will hopefully be coming up in a week or two. The one thing I will show you is that once you have finished talking to her, she'll burst into flame, and left behind will be the Frenzied Flame Seal and five Frenzy Flame Stones. Now, the Frenzied Flame Seal is, in my opinion, the best seal in the game, because just like other seals that boost specific incantations, it will boost Frenzied Flame incantations. But more so than that, no other seal that I know of does this. It increases the madness buildup of your spells as well, because it has a passive 55 madness buildup, which makes this incredibly powerful, especially for PvP builds. Now, when you go and rest at the site of Grace, Melina will hate you so much. But again, Again, I'm going to skim over that and we'll cover it at the end of Hayata's questline video along with an armor set that I'm just about to grab. I'm not going to show you exactly where I've gone to grab it or even me looting it but I will do a little wave in it at the end of the video and give you a little sneak peek of the armor set that you can claim at the end of Hayata's questline. For now let's cut away that footage and show you something else so we don't spoil anything and all I have left to say is thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.